Hey everybody, what is going on? Welcome to another Python programming tutorial with T. Kinter, where we're making this trading application for Bitcoin. Uh, where we left off, we were just basically orienting our code uh, to support the next change that we want to make, which is uh, incorporating a live graph of Bitcoin prices. So uh, you need to make sure that you've got pandas and numpy installed at this point, and you need to make sure the pages are, um, you've got start page and BTTE page, and uh, that's basically it where we need to be at this point. So we come up here um, and we look at our animate function. This is basically where the core of our code is going to be. So the animate function where it's with matplotlib, where it updates um, information uh, through matplotlib, but we can also use this to update a lot of things. So the animate function actually can update um, our tkinter as well. We can throw tkinter code in here and treat animate um, to update our tkinter code. And even though tkinter does have an update function for itself as well, but I see no reason why we want to you know, have two separate updating functions. So we'll probably put most of the stuff in animate. But anyway, this is where the core of all of our data crunching is going to happen. So this will be just a quick example of how we might uh, do something like this. But let's go ahead and get started. So we've got animate. Um, and basically, this entire bit of code here, this was just for sample data that I could show you guys live data, um, deletes. Now we're actually going to do the real friggin' deal. So the first thing that we need is a data link. Now I just showed you a moment ago, well not, well, a moment ago for me anyway. <laughs> uh, this is the API. Uh, like I said before, yeah, that's the username and password. It's not my main account. That's actually the account that we'll be using uh, here. But if you want to try and guess the password, have at it. I think there's uh, like $20 worth of Bitcoin in there. So big money. So anyways, um, this is the account. Uh, and what we're interested in is the last trades. So we're going to be looking for, uh, like we've got method, info, ticker, depth, boom, trades. So we go to trades. And the reason why we want trades is because that will give us historical data too. So if we just clicked on ticker, ticker is only going to give us uh, the high, the low, close. Well, it's not going to even give us close. There's no such thing. But the high, the low, last price, the current volume, um, the last update, that kind of stuff. Um, but we want more than that. We want to be able to populate a graph right away. So we would actually go to trades and then we would click sample request, right? We could click on this one right here. And this is just a list of all the last trades. I think it's probably 50, but as you can see, you can modify this parameter uh, to be up to the last 2000 trades using the get parameter limit. So as you can see here, we get, this is basically the, um, the type, right? So BTC to USD, that's the only type we have. So we would, we're going to be using JSON because this is JSON format. So we would come into BTC USD. Then we see it's whether it was a bid or an ask. And these are um, actually cleared prices. So, so these are all um, trades that really did occur. And then we can come down here. So that was all bid. And it turns out that really we've had almost no asks. That's quite interesting. Um, that'll be interesting to visualize here in a moment. Um, so just a bunch of bids. Uh, I guess just a real increase in price for the most part. So anyway, uh, and then you've got bid. You've also got volume. And you've got uh, the timestamp. So we can use all these to generate a graph. If you're not familiar, this is a Unix timestamp. You'll see a whole lot more of that as we go. So. Uh, let's get started. So first of all, the data link is what? So we're going to call this data link and we're going to say data link equals and basically we can just copy and paste uh, this link, right? We can just do that. But the other thing too though is we're going to add a parameter. So as we saw here, the parameter is limit. So if you don't already know, the way that you add parameters uh, would be with a question mark and then limit equals 2000 for example. And then if you wanted to add more parameters, you would actually use the and sign and then you would say uh, more parm equals whatever, um, just for, for you guys to know. So uh, that's it. That's actually the only parameter I believe here. Oh, and it actually says the default is 150. Um, but anyways, the max is 2000. So that's what we want. More data, more better. <laughs> So anyway, data, so the data from this request is going to equal URL lib.request. Let me move this up a little bit. URL lib.request.url open. And then we want to open the data link. Now, if you're following along this part of the tutorial and you are in Python 2, this little chunk of code here, including what we just wrote, is going to defer greatly. So um, it's been a while since I've written a URL lib2 
commands, but it's very much, it's, it's a lot simpler because there's no difference between strings and bytes um, in Python 2. In Python 3, there are. So uh, we have to do the conversion there. So normally, I think it would be something like urllib2 dot url open, and then you would put the data link, and then you would probably just do dot read, and that would return to data in string format what you want, something like that. Um, but this is not a Python 2 tutorial, but just to get you on the right track. If you have any serious problems, I can probably help you out later. So once we have that, again, this is in bytes, so we have to you have to uh, decode that. So then we would say data dot read all, and then we want to do dot decode. And what are we going to decode? And that's going to be in UTF-8. So now, uh, now we're ready to load this with JSON and the JSON string. So we're going to say data now equals uh, JSON dot load s for load string, and that would be data. So now we've done we've done that. Now we can since we know uh, the only um, if you're not familiar with JSON, I guess uh, probably what I'll try to do is for one I'll put a link to my pandas tutorial series in the description if I remember if I forget someone remind me. Then I will also put a link. There's a, I have a, a, a small like five minute JSON tutorial. Uh, so if you're a little confused about how that works basically works the same way that we would like slice lists. Um, so for example, it's almost like this is a list of lists, like think of it that way. And so, or even a, dic a dictionary is a better way to, to, to call it or a better thing to call it. So think of this as a dictionary. And so the key would be BTC USD and the value is basically all of this. But then, um, then the value is a list of lists, let's say. And then, so then we would say BTC USD type and then if we said ask, it would be anything with a type of ask, right? And then that would return everything. So um, that might be really confusing. So let's just show what I'm talking about. So now we would say data equals uh, data and then the element of uh, BDC USD. So that's this value uh, right here. So when we say data BDC USD, that is corresponding to this block of code that goes all the way down here. Okay, so that's what data BDC USD is. Um, now we're going to use pandas to crunch all this data. So, this, well, basically it'll be 2,000 rows of this much data. That's kind of a lot of data, um, and pandas does a really good job of, of crunching it. Plus, for tick data, we're going to do a difference between bid and ask. So, um, that too. So, data equals data BTC USD. Uh, then we're going to say data equals PD dot data frame, mind uh, the camel casing here, or that's not, I guess not officially camel casing, I'm not really sure because he's capitalizing the first letter, but anyways, note the casing, uh, pd.dataframe, and then what do we want to do that to? Data. So now data is a, is a pandas data set. Um, so then what we're going to say is the buys, because we want to plot buys and sells. So we're going to say all the buys equals data and then we're going to say, and then in brackets here, what you do is you throw kind of like a sort of an if statement, but uh, you'll see what I mean. So, uh, or a, I guess a condi not a conditional, a comparison operator, I suppose. So buys equals data, where data, uh, data type, and that is corresponding to here, right? So where data type equals what? Well, buys are where we have a bid. So someone made a bid to buy. So we're type uh, equals um, bid. So that's where what buys are. And then conversely, we would say sells equals basically this exact same thing, only instead of bid, it was an ask. So the price that these people are asking. So that's what bid and ask is if you're not familiar. Now, uh, we need to take that a little bit further and we need to convert this Unix timestamp into a uh, what happened? I, okay, we've got pan picture of a panda here. I, I pulled the wrong wrong window. <laughs> I'm like looking at that. What? Uh, see, these are Unix timestamps, and Matplotlib does not recognize a Unix timestamp. You have to convert it. Um, it luckily it, it recognizes a various NumPy times, um, as well as I think it's like a, it's got like an MPL format or something. Anyway, uh, we're gonna convert that. That's why we needed NumPy. Um, also, you'll find NumPy is used with pandas, so you need NumPy as well. So anyways, uh, we're going to say buys, um, 
And keep in mind, this buys became a pandas set because data was pandas. So buys is a pandas data frame of data where the data type equals bid. So now we're going to say buys uh, date stamp. So basically, we're going to convert this column because keep in mind, uh, or actually, we're going to add a column. My bad. So we're adding this column buys of date stamp, and we're going to say date stamp equals basically timestamp converted. Okay. So the way that we're going to do that is buys date stamp uh, equals mp dot array, and then we're going to say it's an array of uh, the buys, and then timestamp. So that's re buys timestamp references the po uh, the buys data frame timestamp. So basically, a data frame is like a CSV, basically, uh, you know, an Excel spreadsheet, basically. And you've got timestamp column, and then under that column, you'll have you have all these times. Um, so so buys equals MP arrays buys timestamp. But then we're going to do something tricky here, and we're actually going to say dot as type. And then we're going to convert that to date time 64s. Now, um, that gives us a date stamp. Finally, uh, we're going to say by dates equals buys. And actually, we'll put this in parentheses. Buys date stamp and then dot to list. And then. Um, that will be our like buys um, string that we're going to throw at matplotlib. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. So then we're going to do basically the exact same thing um, here. Or let's just go ahead and uh, we'll take this copy, paste, and we need to change basically everything to cells. So buys day stamp, buys timestamp as type, and then finally cells, and then we'll call this cell data. Okay, so now we have our data sets. Now we need to do a.clear. Then we're gonna do a.plot underscore date. That's matplotlib information there. We're gonna plot dates. Now we have, um, date. oh, you know what we need? We need to, call, not by data. We're calling this by dates and then sell dates. So we plot date and then we're going to plot, uh, let's say by dates. And then we plot by, um, and so by dates is this, right? We converted to list. So by dates is a list. Get back over here. Uh, is a list of these timestamps that were converted to the NumPy date time 64. Uh, so we're plotting that as our date. And then, um, that, so that's the X parameter. And then the, for the Y, we're plotting by. And then well, what do we want there? Well, we're going to go ahead and plot the price, right? That's the Y that we want. So that would be like 361.868, for example. So by uh, price. And then we want to plot with a color. And then uh, later on, maybe a label. But we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, and then we're going to basically do the exact same thing. So A dot plot underscore date sell dates, and then sell uh, price, like that. And uh, later on, we can add a legend and all of that. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we're all set. So let's go ahead and, and plot this before we go make it pretty and make sure that we've, we've done what we need to do. Uh, OK, we got an error. JSON object must be string, not HTTP response. Let's see what we've done there. Close out of this. Uh, read all dot decode uh, UTF-8. We did URL open the data link. Let's see, JSON data, and then we convert at this point here. Hold on now, folks. Let's see what have we what have we done wrong here? Data link data dot. Uh, oh, I see. Okay, so what we did is uh, this is not a Basically, data.readall, just, it just did it. It didn't assign it to data. So <laughs> this needs to be data equals data.readall. Um, common, common mistake to make a lot of times where you think you're, you're modifying the variable by doing that, and, and you're really not. Um, so anyways, let's, let's try that one more time. I th hopefully that'll be it as far as errors are concerned. But we'll see. By is not defined. By is what we want. 
Right. So I got a by is not defined error. Um, I kind of covered over the first error. Sorry about that. Uh, so this is the name error by is not defined, meaning it's not defined. So we come down here and we see that we're calling this buys cells. So add an S and S. Try one more time, Harrison. Let's see what we get this time. No red code. That's good to see. <laughs> so we'll hit agree. And uh, we get our sort of a graph. This isn't quite the graph I wanted, but it is a graph. Um, and we can see it is actually in time. Uh, a couple of things. One, the size is inappropriate. Uh, I have noticed that when I uh, increase the size here uh, while I'm filming, for whatever reason, it like flashes black and stuff. It's really crazy. It's not what's happening on my screen, but it happens on the camera for whatever reason. So I won't do that to you guys. But obviously, we need to make the graph a little bigger. But we do see timestamps down here. We've got buys and sells, and we just saw it update just now. Um, that's a lot more buys and sells than I swear we saw <laughs> in this. Um, I guess we're starting to get a lot of asks now, but just a few moments ago there was like only buys and I'm just not seeing that in this graph. But anyway, I'll take their word for it. <laughs> uh, anyway, so here's a graph. That's exciting. Obviously, I don't really like the idea of scatter plots on, on C of BTC. I actually do um, have buys and sells typically marked this way. But on such a um, high frequency graph, I don't really see the point. But like for here, I'm, I do mark the buys and sells as uh, you know scatter plots. But I actually kind of like it as a line more often. But uh, anyway, that I guess you could you could stick with that kind of stuff as well. But um, anyway, if you want to keep it that way, go for it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and show us how we can convert that to a line. This just looks really messy. Like it's visually really hard for me to connect the connect the dots literally here um, part of that is because of the the size of the graph so like uh, we could probably remedy that by zooming in or something but even then it's it's really hard so anyway in the next video what we'll do is we'll make sure this is a, a proper line graph uh, as well as um, we'll add labels to it and we'll make the size a little better because um, this isn't really proper so anyways, uh, stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions or comments on this video, uh, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, um, let me let me close this. And really, most of our code was basically right here, this massive function. So I'll leave it here. If you got lost somewhere, pause it, try to copy that code. I will also put this code up on uh, pythonprogramming.net. So check that out if you're lost. Otherwise, as always, uh, you can leave comments, questions below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. Till next time.